guys, welcome back to the second installment of working with natural language processing. So in my last video, I introduced a language identification, um, showing you that there are three, basically three lines of code in which to identify in language. Uh, and so I forgot to mention in the last video that um, the scheme, the language scheme, can actually identify up to 52 languages. Whereas pulling out the lexical class or the part of speech only is applicable to eight languages. And those languages are English, French, Italian, German, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, and Turkish. So lex there's certain aspects where it only recognizes the, that handful of languages. Um, whereas identifying languages, there's 52 that it, it recognizes. So. It's pretty cool <laughs> if you think about it. Um, and then I also wanted to kind of show you that um, lexical class, I know I started at zero, which was um, air, and it is a pronoun, but I also kind of wanted to show you, well, you don't necessarily have to look at the first word. Um, you can look at another word like um, arbeitete or arbeit, arbeiten, um, which is the number three. So it's at three, which is a verb, which is correct. So I kind of wanted to show you, or you can look at, look at the next word, nicht, which is, I believe, 13. And it's an adverb. So again, you can look at different words and it will tell you what part of speech it is. Okay. All right, so um, the next part I want to work on is kind of um, identifying tokens. So if you want to iterate over each word, there we are gonna have to increase our steps. Um, so instead of the three above, which we actually do use, we do use all three, we're gonna actually introduce two others, which is we're gonna actually create some options, and then we're gonna enumerate over the text to pull out uh, the different parts of, well, actually we're gonna pull out all the words um, and then with the options, we're going to specify to ignore certain parts or omit certain parts of the text. All right, so in order to do so, um, let's go ahead and set the options. So I'm going to just create a constant because I'm not going to change this. And um, I'm going to make it really clear that this is just for the tokens. So um, token options. And this is going to be equal to NS linguistic tagger. <laughs> uh, but now I'm going to do dot notation because I want to um, bring in a number of options. So I'm going to do dot and then options. Okay. So just really quickly, let's click on options. And options is a struct. So um, let's see here. Let's go back to tagger. Let's go up, back down, see where the options are. It's not showing it. All right. Oh, it is a struct. Um, and I'll, I'll show you. So these are the different options we have available, element, int, join names, omit, other, omit punctuation, white space, and words. I actually want to omit white space. So that's one option I can do. Um, and then I'm actually going to do a bar because this is a struct so I can add more options to this um, if I want. Because I also actually want to omit punctuation. So let's do NS linguistic tagger dot options dot punctuation so omit punctuation all right so let's quickly look at what this is so it's an error <laughs> um what is it saying so can cannot, cannot convert value value to ui int 8 so um why this is giving me an issue is because i didn't add raw value so i need to do dot raw value so it's ui int and this is also raw value. Oops. That should fix the problem. Okay. 
So now if we look at token options, we can see it is of type U int. Okay, so now we have our values in there. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is create an instance. So we're going to do another constant. So we want this to be different from the above example. So I'm going to do token tagger. And again, just do NS linguistic tagger dot tag, oops, not dot, um, tagger, tag schemes. So we have to set the tag schemes. Okay, so here I want to do something a little different. Uh, basically, we'll, I am going to create an instance where I already know the language. So I'm going to actually pull the first variable, which is text, which is English. Um, so basically, if you pull in um, all the schemes available for a language that you already know exists, this will actually cut down on um, memory and it'll be a lot, it'll perform a lot faster. So I just want to, you know, show this to you. Um, in the other examples, I'm not going to actually pull in all the available tag schemes for the language. I'm actually going to have it detect the language for me. So um, how, how do I do that? How do I pull in all the available tag schemes for a language? Well, first thing we need to do is do um, NS linguistic tagger dot and then available tag schemes for language. So the second one here. And because I already know what the language is, which is EN, I just put in EN. And then options is going to actually be the token options above that I set. So it is an int and not UNT. So if we look at this, this is a, oopsie. This is a UNT and not int. We have to cast this into an int. It would be easier to do so because it is UNT. So we do int and then token options. That should correct any errors, which it does. So now we need to bring in text like we did last time. And do dot string equals text. All right, so here is where I set the range. I'm, and if you remember my first example, I didn't set any ranges, I set them to nil. But in this case, I do want to set the range because I want to I want it to iterate over all of the text in, uh, in this variable. I want it to iterate over everything. So I do have to set the range. I mean, I can have it, you know, go like halfway, but that's not fun. So <laughs> I'm gonna have it do all of it, but you can set it where you only have it go over a certain number or certain um, a certain range like you can set the range so I'm going to show you how to do that so let's go ahead and create um, a variable here I'm going to set it to a token range and have that equal to ns range so that is the class that we need to use in order for have this to work um, I need it to be um, say location so I need location int this is what I need so location is the start. I want to start at the beginning. The length, I'm going to have it automatically calculate from the variable. So it's going to be text.utf. This is the encoding that I want, and I want it to count. So it's going to return an int as well. So the error should clear out, and it does. All right, so now we have the range. Um, so now it's time to enumerate over the text to pull out all the words and the tags and the tokens and whatnot. So how do I do this? Well, I need to call the um, instance, which is token tagger. And then I do dot notation. I'm gonna do um, enumerate tags in NS range. That's why I set the range to NS range and then the scheme all right, so what I'm going to do is um, try to explain this as best I can as I'm typing it, because um, these errors are just horrendous. So again, I'm going to bring in the range, which is um, token range. The scheme, um, I'm going to actually pull in. I'm going to pull in. I'm going to pull in name type or lexical class. So. 
Again, I can do NS linguistics tag scheme dot name type blah blah blah. But I'm going to actually do this the short way. I'm just do dot notation and um, type in the scheme I want. So that is the short way of doing it. And I don't know. I personally like to see the long version so I know exactly where it's coming from. Um, but the short version works just as well because you know it needs to work. All right, so now I'm going to bring in the um, options which is my token options that I created above. All right, so we have an, um, a slight issue. Um, basically, the type is not the same, as you see down here, of my flare message. So this is what we need to actually use. So I'm just going to just copy that and paste that there. And then we're just going to type in our variable or our constant. And now the error should go away. All right, well, it does for that, but then we haven't um, actually uh, completed the last part. So this here, using as actually a block, basically what we have to do is we have to put in a block in order for it to enumerate and output something. So I'm actually just gonna do some curly brackets. Should, that should silence the error for right now. Nope, it doesn't, because I actually need to put in some arguments. Now, if you decided to look into this, um, there's not, the documentation isn't entirely done for this yet, uh, but after digging around online, I found out that those four options are basically um, tag, token range, sentence range, and stop. So we have to add those four arguments first. So I'm going to do tag, comma, token range, sentence range, and stop in. Okay, so now that's just silence the error entirely. Now you're probably wondering, okay, well, you have token range up here. Is that the same thing? No, um, because this is a block, it doesn't look outside of what's in, of, of what's in it. So uh, basically this is self-contained. So it's not really looking at this token range technically um, because we actually are bringing it in here. So I can actually rename this. I probably should rename it um, text range just to make it clear that they're not the same. There you go. So it's not the same. <laughs> so I'm make that clear that they're not the same. Okay, so uh, I brought in my four arguments. It has silenced all the errors. So now we have to do something with this. So uh, just really quickly, I also want to explain what stop is. So stop is actually a reference to a Boolean value. Uh, basically, it it's set to true. Um, and it basically stops for the processing. It's a out only argument and you can't set it to true inside of this block. So it's just kind of a something you have to add. Um, I wish I knew more than that because if, for example, if I click on this, the block doesn't have any descriptions at all. Like, I mean, the range has no description, but I do know what that means, <laughs> you know. Um, so here, here's the blocks. So we have NS linguistic tag, which is tag. Uh, NS range is the token range. The other NS range is the sentence range. And then we have this pointer, which is the stop. So again, this is still a work in progress. Um, if we take a look at it, let's see, enumerating, enumerate tags scheme here. Okay, so just give a little bit more. Oh, here's here's where I got it from. So um, it's a block to apply. Um, again, it's a, like I said, it's a reference to a Boolean value. So here here is the block. So you have to have these following arguments in there. Um, for example, even if if you don't use these, you can actually just put an underscore, and that would actually solve. That would satisfy um, this block. Well, at least for that argument, like you don't have to necessarily use sentence token range. Um, you can just put some 
underscores in there and it will satisfy it. But I'm just going to leave it as is so that we have it for your reference even though I'm not going to use a sentence range. I am going to use token range and tag though. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull out the word um, that it's currently going through. So I'm going to do let word equal and I'm going to pull in the text and I'm going to cast it as ns string. Right now it's just set a string and not ns string. And then I want the substring. So I'm going to do substring with ns range because we do have a range coming in. Uh, again, if we look at this, we have um, token range, which is ns range. So if we scroll all the way over to the block, we see we have ns range. And that is the token or the word range. NS, the second NS range is actually the sentence. So I want the NS range um, or the token or the word in this case. So I'm going to do uh, token range. Okay, so that's actually going to pull out the sentence or the word. And then I want to pull out the tag. And so the tag is whatever I did, which is the name type or lexical class. And this time, this is going to be the lexical class, whether it's a noun, pronoun, adverb, verb, etc. So I'm actually going to do uh, let, let me see the converted tag, because I'm actually going to convert the tag and have it equal uh, tag. I'm going to forcibly unwrap it, because if we look at this, we see that NS linguistics tag is an optional. So I got to forcibly unwrap it. And then I got to pull out its raw value. Because it's an NS tag, I have to do underscore raw value. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to print this out. I'm going to do print a print statement here. I'm going to do fax forward slash and do word. No, tag, convert tag. And then I am going to do a colon space and I'm going to pull in the word that we were looking at or that it was analyzing. Okay, let's see here. Oh my gosh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. All right, so what it did was it pulled out every word, ignoring white spaces and punctuation, and has analyzed each and every word in here. So verb, destroyed, yes, conjunction, or verb, determiner, noun. So yeah, so it's, it's really cool how it can analyze um, what each uh, word is, which is pretty awesome. Pretty nifty. Okay, so I did say I was going to do like shorthand, um, which I'll probably do for the next example. <laughs> All right, so I've introduced quite a bit of things here. Um, Again, we had to add uh, two more uh, steps in order to enumerate over the text, which is enumerate over, over the text, and then we had to set some options because we didn't want to enumerate over spaces and punctuation and stuff like that. So um, we also did a range. So actually there's three things we had to do. We had to bring in the range and we had to do, actually we had to modify some things here because we didn't do tag, returning a single tag, we enumerated it instead. Okay, so uh, stay tuned for the next set, which is uh, I'm going to do, um, which is I'm going to introduce some shorthand, lemmatization, and pulling out named entities. Okay, so if this has helped you at all, you know, just give this video a thumbs up. If you want to stay tuned for the next set, <laughs> handling uh, natural language processing, you have to hit that notification button to be notified. All right, keep calm and code on, my friends.